We've shown you some beautiful tree farms through the years on Farm Week, but today's tree farm, it's one of the best. Bobby Watkins of Aberdeen and Starkville is the president of Mississippi Forestry Association, Outstanding Tree Farmer of the Year. Watkins has a tree farm where multiple use is more than a label. It's the guiding management principle. You can find beautiful pine trees, wildflowers, wildlife, and a sense of history at Coontail Farm. You know, I call this recreational forestry. We make excellent money on our, our tree harvesting. we would be doing a clear cut. We'll be starting to replant for our grandchildren. So it actually goes from my grandfather to my granddaughter. It's all about family for Bobby and Martha Watkins at Coontail Farm. The almost 200 acre farm was bought after World War II by Watkins' grandfather. At that time, it was a dairy farm with two tenant families. The farm was leased later for row crop production. It began its transformation into a tree farm when it was enrolled in the Conservation Reserve Program in the mid 1980s. This is his passion and his hobby is, you know, riding on a tractor and looking at his pine trees and seeing how they're growing and taking care of it. He just loves that. And any opportunity that he has to share his hobby, he does. The Watkins family land became a certified tree farm in 2005, but it's been cared for under a management plan for more than 30 years. He's got a plan for about everything he does out here, I think, you know, and it's timed and also seasonal for what he does, uh, from his uh, wildflower gardens to his uh, timber out here, everything's planned. I think that's what uh, being a, a tree farmer is all about. Uh, is, is utilizing every uh, inch of your place and utilizing it in a lot of different areas uh, to promote tree farm, to promote forestry, and I think Mr. Bobby does a good job of that. And Watkins does all the labor himself. His management strategies work with each other. Watkins uses what is called the hub and spoke technique to improve wildlife habitat and recreational opportunities. The spokes or lanes are laid out into the pine trees from a central hub. A hunting or viewing stand is placed in the hub so there's an unobstructed view down all the spokes. The spokes can be used as fire lanes or haul roads during tree harvest. They're excellent sites to plant wildlife food plots or encourage the growth of native food plant species. We're exposing this soil which scarifies kind of a lot of those native seed and then you're going to get a, a totally different plant community in these DS lanes. You're going to get your ragweeds back, your partridge peas and a lot of things that wouldn't necessarily germinate when you've got all that pine straw. Watkins lanes are part of what's called quality vegetation management or QVM. It uses a variety of techniques including prescribed burning and herbicides to control non-native or undesirable species. Research at Mississippi State has documented up to 100 native species that come back when you practice what's called quality vegetation management. That's after a thin, you might have to use a herbicide to kill the hardwood brush, then you do a cool season control fire. You can put some disc lanes in, but what you're doing is opening that forest floor up to allow all these wildflowers called forbs that are uh, blooming to germinate. We're using technology to actually move back almost to pre-European plant communities. And so we brought in so many plants from around the world that weren't in our native habitat, so you have to control them some way. You could walk through here and try to pull up every one of them, but you'd have a hard time pulling up all the privet hedge. This is quality vegetation management versus no management at all. Uncontrolled sweet gum trees block sunlight from reaching the ground, preventing wildlife food plots from germinating. To the left, prescribed burning and herbicide applications have resulted in an explosion of desirable plants. For those who wonder about using a forestry herbicide, Watkins says the one he uses is labeled for use in drinking water reservoirs. Most all the herbicides come from pharmaceutical screens they're uh, researched. Uh, the one we use here is called Arsenal. Uh, there's other names for it. It's actually labeled to use in drinking reservoirs to kill emerged uh, plants growing in a reservoir. So it's basically not toxic at all to the wildlife. Watkins says quality vegetation management promotes the growth of plants with high quality protein. Simply put, the land can feed more wildlife. The fastest growing points of the plants are the most desirable.
what they've found out uh, from research is those growing points are excellent and so you don't want to let your stuff get so tall they can't get to those growing points so this control burning strip disc and everything it drops that uh, growing point down low enough for birds quail turkeys and deer to be able to feed the pawpaw is another native tree in which watkins has taken an interest once enjoyed by thomas jefferson and george washington Animals also like the papaya-like fruit. And you see all through here are pawpaws, and the pawpaw will be kind of up in the top, it'll be green, and it'll kind of turn yellow. And for my granddaughter Eve, I've planted a pawpaw patch of improved pawpaws. And so up at the house, we've got actually, we're starting a pawpaw orchard so we can grow pawpaws and have them maybe for Thanksgiving. Watkins' enthusiasm for forestry and wildlife management has been covered by national publications and television shows. He's influenced many through the field days and Mississippi State University forestry summer camps that he's hosted at Coontail Farm. One of the biggest impacts, I mean, it's very evident because you see some of the local landowners in this area that is, has came to Mr. Bobby and asked for, uh, for his help. You know, he's, he's helping some of the local landowners do some um, some timber management, do some uh, practices on their own property as far as getting the, him to come out and give them advice on when to, when to thin or when to uh, spray. Watkins also likes to introduce non-forestry groups to tree farming. We do a lot of wildflower plantings, our native wildflowers. We have a lot out in the woods, you know, in our dusting lanes and also where we burn. And so next May, May of uh, 2016, I've already got three garden clubs, one from Lowndes County, one from Monroe County, and one from Knoxville County that requested to come look at forest management and wildflowers. You can also find the unique at Coontail Farm. There's a cannon. There's a Mississippi Forestry Commission tower that was once used to spot wildfires. It's not hard to notice family and history mean a lot to Bobby and Martha Watkins. Their children and grandchild enjoy returning to Coontail Farm. It appears the farm's future is in good hands. One of the most amazing things when they were young, of course, they didn't want to do stuff because I made them work all the time, picking up sticks, mowing, different things. But now they love coming here. They'll drive from Dallas and from Nashville for a weekend just to stay here. So that's been really a blessing to see them starting to enjoy the woods. You can watch this story again on Bobby Watkins on our Farm Week website, our Facebook page, or YouTube. Our website address is farmweek.msucares.com. Do you need advice on managing your trees? Well, get in touch with Mississippi State University Extension, the Mississippi Forestry Commission, or the Mississippi Forestry Association. And also the MFA can get you in touch with a local county forestry association, which is a great place to get more knowledge as well. And Bobby, it is just a beautiful place. You were with me that day. Certainly, I mean, it's one of a kind, especially in North Mississippi. It just, uh, hey, I'd go back there today.